So because it was such a beautiful spot, I decided to wake up and do a sunrise shoot. So I knew today would be a big drive too, that's part of the reason I got up early, um, but yeah, what a way to wake up. Yeah, everyone has their own little posse. Just beautiful. Everyone has their own way to close up their van at night with me, unless the customers ask. I leave it open so one, you know, you can't see inside from a distance of what's going on. Um, two, when you're in the van and someone's on the outside, you see them easier than they see you inside. And three, there's nothing like opening your eyes without having to move and seeing a beautiful sunrise like this. So that was our magnificent overnight at Bunda Cliffs. Now it's heading for the, what I heard was the heavy part of the Nullarbor, which is not so heavy because there's just so much to see. Petrol stations or roadhouses don't work the same way they do in the city. In the city they display it display a price per litre in the outback they don't so you've got to virtually drive in and then drive to find out drive in to see the price and if you like it um, you pay it if you don't you move on to the next one and so this one I didn't like so I moved on to the next service station and here we are going back across the South Australian Western Australia quarantine border quarantine area I know the fuel's cheaper up further. Yeah, um, Eucla and Mundjabilla, about the same price. Price, no worries. Yep. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Yeah, so as you hear, um, the quarantine people are quite friendly and helpful. I also have an app that tells me the price of each service station, but sometimes it's not actually up to date with the current price. So the plan is to head back into Eucala to fuel up and have a little bit of a look around. I just filled up so we got I don't know if you can see that Yes, in Outback Australia, they don't really believe in fences. 
animals are just wandering everywhere. So here we are just outside Euclid and you actually head down into the flats of the Nullarbor Plain so I decided to do a drone fly and show you what we're heading towards. So it looks like a whole lot of nothing along the road, but um, yeah, I was quite surprised. So when I'm travelling in the motorhome, I love the left lane, so it lets all the traffic and the, the speed demons go. I like to sit on about 96 kilometres an hour. It's not too fast, not too slow, good fuel economy, and you get to see everything, and it's not as hard to pull up when you see something you want to um, look at, and you've got to, I just slow it down, let it go down the gears, and then turn around, and We'll find a place to turn around and head back and view so yeah it's a very comfortable way to travel as well so not only you just got to look out for kangaroos and wombats but you also got to watch out for these eagles that sit on the top of the dead carcasses eating away and like this guy's got a wingspan of about two and a half meters So now we're just at the bottom on the flats of the Nullarbor, not too much higher than sea level, so yeah. So in the outback the roads double as an airport, I think from emergency services. So we are legally driving on an airport without a boom gate. And these makeshift airports are all over Australia. So I decided to send the drone up and have a look what is around us even though there's nothing for miles except for more trucking. <laughs> And even though I hadn't passed a farm for miles and miles and miles, here where I'm doing a drone fly, there's these cattle just walking along this road, this inner road. So it must be the internal road to one of the farms, but there was nothing around for, for miles either way. Except truck after truck after truck.
you come across one of these guys that decides he wants to ride the Nullarbor on a push bike. So I decide to top up my fuel tank and of course I'm always polite on the road and let these guys go first, give them some room. And as I said before, it's a lucky dip on what you pay because you don't know until you get to the pump. Yeah, and another pit stop for Jack. Um, pull up, let him have a run around. Road train goes past, of course. After road train, after road train. <laughs> it's everywhere. <laughs> And then off we go and hit the road again. So this is the last roadhouse for 90 miles and we hit the 90 mile straightest road in the world. So I pulled off the side of the road halfway along and decide to send the drone up to see what's about. So as I said before, it, it might sound like it's a long stretch and it's boring, but there's the landscape changes all the time and there's always some photographs to be taken or um, send the drone up or, or whatever. But yeah, I, I never found the Nullarbor one bit boring. And yes, there's another one on a push bike that wants to travel the Nullarbor on two wheels and human power. Yeah, so we both stop, stretch our legs and have a little bit of rest at this little rest stop on the way and yeah, it's not about trying to get somewhere really quickly this road trip. And even though we're in the middle of nowhere, Jack loves to go exploring. Yeah, so these were the lines I was talking about when we're driving on a airport or makeshift airport. So we make it to the end of the 90 mile straight road and thank you for watching this episode and see you on the next episode. Yeah.